Something strange is happening beneath the American Southwest. A silent force is pushing upward, tearing downward, and pulling apart the land beneath two of the most peaceful-looking states in the country. Most people who drive across New Mexico or southern Colorado have no idea they're crossing the scar of a continent, a wound stretching hundreds of miles long, deep enough to reshape everything above it. Scientists have known about it for years, but only recently have they begun to understand what it is becoming. Some believe we're watching the opening chapter of North America's eventual breakup, the very beginning of a process that could, one day, tear the continent in half. And the most unsettling part? It's already moving. At first glance, nothing about the Rio Grande Rift looks dangerous. It appears simply as a series of wide valleys, mountain chains, and desert basins. But the land isn't shaped by rivers or erosion not originally. Beneath the quiet surface lies a deep tear in the Earth's crust, stretching from central Colorado to northern Mexico. Geologists describe it with unusual language, a stretching wound, a continental fault zone, a proto-ocean in slow motion, because that's exactly what it is, a crack in the continent, one that is widening, deepening, and pulling apart grain by grain, we think of continents as fixed, immovable, but in this region the ground is quietly drifting, separating by a few millimeters every year. That may not sound like much, but over millions of years, it's enough to change the map of Earth itself. Which raises the question scientists keep returning to. Is the Rio Grande Rift the first sign that North America will eventually split in two? The Rio Grande Rift is not a relic. It's not an old scar left behind by ancient forces. It is alive, shifting, stretching, and reshaping itself right now. Seismic sensors across New Mexico record constant, tiny earthquakes. Most are too small for residents to feel, but they form patterns, signals of rock blocks sliding downward, fault lines adjusting, and deep crustal layers pulling apart. In some places, like the Socorro Magma body, the ground itself is rising by about 2 millimeters per year, pushed upward by a hidden pocket of molten rock nearly 19 kilometers below. This uplift is so steady, so persistent, that satellites can track it from orbit. Heat vents through hot springs and fumaroles scattered across the desert. Small but unmistakable signs that the crust beneath the rift is thinning, allowing Earth's heat to leak upward. This combination of uplift, stretching, and quiet seismic activity tells geologists something important. The rift is still growing. To understand why the rift is alive today, we have to look deep into the continent's past. 30 million years ago, North America was under enormous pressure. The Farallon Plate was sliding beneath the continent, compressing its western edge and raising entire mountain ranges the Rockies included, but eventually that plate broke apart and sank into the mantle. With that pressure gone, the continent began to relax. Imagine bending a thick piece of plastic and then letting go. As it straightens, small cracks form. The same thing happened on a continental scale. The crust began to split. In the region that would become the Rio Grande Rift, the crust was unusually warm, thin, and weak. The perfect place for a tear to begin. The land didn't break all at once. It stretched slowly, faults cracked open. Massive blocks of crust slid downward, forming long basins that still define New Mexico today. But the most important part of the story was happening below. As the crust thinned, hot mantle rock began rising closer to the surface. This weakened the lithosphere even more, accelerating the rifting process and fueling volcanic fields all along the rift. To the north, the Yemez volcanic field burst into existence, creating one of the largest calderas in the United States, the spectacular Valles Caldera. Its eruption spread ash across huge portions of the continent. Farther south, dark basaltic lava crept across the Taos Plateau, forming vast lava plains and scattered cinder cones. These volcanic regions aren't random. They align neatly with the axis of the rift, the weakest part of the crust where magma can break through. This is the same pattern seen in early stage continental breakups around the world. The Rio Grande Rift, in other words, behaves exactly like the first stage of a new ocean. 
Today, the Rio Grande Rift is spreading at about one to two millimeters per year. That seems slow, but the consequences are measurable. Mountain ranges continue to rise and tilt. Valleys continue to sink. Faults continue to slide. Every small earthquake, every subtle uplift reading, every warm spring feeding into desert basins is a reminder that North America is still separating along this line. To scientists, the rift is not a geological artifact, it's a living system. The real question is no longer whether the rift is active, it's what it is becoming. If the Rio Grande Rift keeps stretching for tens of millions of years, the American Southwest would undergo a transformation almost beyond imagination. The basins would continue deepening until seawater, probably from the Gulf of Mexico, eventually floods the lowest parts. Colorado, New Mexico, and West Texas could one day sit along the shores of a long inland sea. Volcanism would intensify along the central axis of the rift. A chain of volcanic islands could form, similar to the early Red Sea. As the rift widened further, the crust would thin to the breaking point. New oceanic crust would form at the center, just as it does along the mid-Atlantic ridge. At that stage, the continent would officially be torn in two. The western portion of North America, including parts of Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah, would slowly drift away from the central and eastern regions. Two land masses where once there was one, a new ocean where today there are deserts and mountains. This is not fantasy. The Gulf of California formed through the exact same process. As dramatic as that vision is, tectonics do not follow a straight path. Many rifts begin boldly, only to stall and freeze in place. One of the best examples lies beneath Lake Superior, where the mid-continent rift nearly split North America a billion years ago, then abruptly died. The Rio Grande Rift could meet the same fate. Its progress depends on forces we barely understand, how the mantle is flowing beneath the region, whether stress increases along the western plate boundary, how the buried fragments of the old Farallon plate influence heat flow, whether new subduction zones begin to form elsewhere. Any of these factors could accelerate the rift or shut it down entirely. This uncertainty is part of what makes the Rio Grande Rift so compelling. It is neither a failed rift nor a fully realized one. It stands on a knife's edge, a continental tear whose destiny is still unwritten. Regardless of what happens next, the Rio Grande Rift offers a rare window into Earth's most powerful processes. It shows that continents are not permanent. They breathe, stretch, shatter, and rebuild over spans of time far beyond human history. It shows how mountains rise and fall, how valleys appear, how oceans are born, and how the surface of our planet is never as solid as it seems. We tend to think of North America as fixed, eternal, but beneath the quiet deserts and mountain towns of the Southwest, the future of the continent is unfolding, slowly, silently, right now. So, will North America really split into two? Will a new ocean someday stretch from Colorado to Mexico? Will volcanic islands rise along the rift line like a newborn Red Sea? No one can say for certain. But we do know this. The process has already begun. The land is already moving, and the Rio Grande Rift is already shaping the distant future of the continent. Continents appear unchanging only because we measure them on human time. But in the time scale of the Earth, the real scale, they are restless, fragile, and always in motion. Today, the rift is a story written in millimeters. But in the grand sweep of geological time, those millimeters are the first strokes of a continent's transformation. Do you think the Rio Grande Rift will stall like the mid-continent rift? Or is North America truly beginning to split apart? Share your thoughts below. I'm reading every comment.